Hello and welcome back. We're going to jump right into how we can make some imagery look really dynamic. Now, remember what I said about stock photos? Avoid them, like the plague. They are horrible. They just don't really do anything for your product or your website or whatever you're building. They just make your designs look really amateur. So I'm gonna show you how you can use the Figma plugin Unsplash to generate some really good imagery. And then we can use a couple other plugins that can make that imagery really stand out. So. Let's jump right in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select Unsplash. Perfect. Now this is the plugin and it's really great, really easy to use. You can search based off of presets, like these categories, you can insert randomly, which I would never really do, but it's kind of interesting to, if you just need a quick image and you don't care what it is. I like just searching quickly by string. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna type in like portrait, and let's see what comes up. Now look at this, they don't necessarily look like stock photos, some of them may be stock photos, but these are really nice images to use. I think I'm gonna grab this one. I really like the background. So we can click it and insert that image and bam, there it is. Really easy. So we're just gonna call this our portrait. So we know what to do. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna create another frame. So well, we're gonna create our first frame. We're gonna press F, we're gonna drag that mouse, and there we go, we got our frame. Take this image and throw it into the frame. Perfect. So we'll just rename that to demo so we can keep track of it. Sometimes we'll get images, some like this, and we'll just throw them into the layout, throw the text beside it, we'll set the text and we'll forget about the image and kind of never look at it again. Well, we won't necessarily do some extra work to it, but there are different ways we can like manipulate our images or work with them to make them much more dynamic and just visually interesting. So let me show you what plugins I usually use if I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into plugins again, and here's another plugin I really love. This is called Remove Background. Now you'll need to set up an account and then set up an API key, but it's super easy. Don't worry about it. You'll thank me later. So I'm going to create a copy of this and I'm going to remove this background. So it's running in the background right there. And there you go. We have removed it. That's pretty awesome, right? Now, this image is now pretty cool. Like we can work within different ways. Like we can introduce other elements in the background. We can make it seem like we're manipulating uh, space with uh, this flat image. So let's do that. So sometimes I'll do something like this where I'll grab like a square. Now, the other thing about removing background, take a look at the side of her face. There is some sort of like purplish light from the original photo. It fits in this scene, but when you put it on a white background, it won't necessarily fit. And it depends what you're gonna do with your composition, but keep that in mind because that would look kind of weird just because you want whatever you're removing the background and whatever's in the foreground here to fit with whatever you're using it for. So for the sake of this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna zoom out here so I can grab these colors. Now I'm gonna select my color I'm gonna to go to my linear gradient. And here we can start doing some interesting things. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna copy this color, and I'm gonna select that. The opacity is defaulted to zero, so we're gonna bring that up to 100. And we are going to take the color picker and we're gonna grab that color right down there. So we basically just mimic that gradient to the best of our abilities. And what we can do is we can right click and send it to the back. And all of a sudden now this image is much more dynamic, much more interesting to look at. And you can start seeing now her face, the lighting, it starts matching with what we have here. We can alternate it any which way we like. We can make it a little bit more lighter if we want. And there we go, like we can do stuff like that and it's super easy. Let's group this so we don't get lost. And let's do something else. Let's manipulate how this two dimensional image looks like on your page. We can give the illusion of three dimensional image. So what we'll do here is we can just grab that, 
we're gonna put that there and we're gonna actually copy that gradient. We'll, so we'll just select it on the side here and Command C. We're gonna open up a stroke, select there, and there we go. Now our stroke actually has that. You can faintly see that and we can bump that up to whatever number we like. We'll just pick something like this and we're gonna bring this down just a bit. Okay, so as you can see, it's snapping to the bottom of the image, which is great, something like that. Okay, now here's where we can use masks to really help hide certain layers of the image. We can also even crop the image, it can act as a mask. So we can do it both ways and I'll show you how to do that both ways. So let's select our main image we're gonna Command C, copy it, and Command V. And now we have a second image over here. What we can do is, we can take that image and just do something like this, crop it, so it's only going to show what is within this actual, these blue borders over here. So we're gonna crop it to there. We're just gonna call this one Mass. And we're gonna call this one our OG, our original. And we're gonna send that to the back. And so you can start doing some interesting things, maybe not for the head like that, but let me show you what else we can do. We can uh, take that original mask and we can apply that right to the top. So we're not gonna scale it. You saw what happened when we scaled it there. We kind of lost it a bit. And uh, we kind of scaled it and it skewed the actual image. But there you go. Like now we can have something that's really dynamic like that. We can use it for like an avatar. We can use it for like a team photo. Uh, but it's really simple to do something like this. Now, if we wanted to do the same trick, but with like an actual mask, we can do that as well. So we can copy our OG layer, which is in the background. We're going to Command C, Command V. We'll bring the new one to the front right there, and we'll call this masked image. We're going to grab our rectangle tool, so we'll press R, or you can go up here, and we're just going to drag that to the top, and we're just gonna line it up with the top of that image over here, just so it's going to show above the actual stroked rectangle square. So we can rename this to mask, rectangle and what we want to do is to make this mask work for the image we're going to send the mask to the back it needs to be behind the image so we'll send it to the back we're going to select so we're going to grab that and grab the image in the front and we're going to select this right here this is our mask tool and it's going to use that rectangle to crop the image to that portion similarly to what we did before and there you go same effect uh, other people like using masks, you can use uh, cropping images as well. It's totally up to you. So now we have some interesting things that we can do like that. There's other things that we can do even with like product-based images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new frame. We'll do this one more time with something else, something a little different. So we'll rename that to Demo2. We'll, we're going to open up Unsplash. And let's search for something like uh, PS4, let's see, something, oh, there we go. This is, this is good. So we're gonna insert that image, make sure it's in our frame. We're gonna scale that, and to scale, to make sure that images scale proportionally, we're gonna hold down Shift, you can do uh, shift and option. Shift will just drag the corner to the other corner. Shift option will kind of just drag everything together to center. So I'm just gonna hold shift and option, do that. And there we go, we got, we got an image here. I'm gonna duplicate that. I'm just gonna rename these OG. We'll call this the new OG. Great, okay. Let's make another copy. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to use that same plugin, remove background. Let that run over here. You'll see the status of it. Perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crop that handout because it looks kind of weird. 
I mean, you could do interesting things right with that. So I'm going to crop that out. And here we go. We have our image. Now, this is a PlayStation controller. Uh, what we could also do is we can grab like a rectangle again. So we'll press R, grab the rectangle. Let's send this to the back. And we're going to rename this BG for background. What we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We'll have a gradient. And we'll set it to like kind of the blue colors that PlayStation likes to use. So remember this always gets defaulted to zero opacity. We can fix that quickly. So there we go. Like now we have kind of like a little product image that we can use. We'll just move this over. I don't think we really need it right now, actually. Perfect. And we can start actually introducing different things like shapes, shadows, like we can make this image even seem much more three dimensional than it already kind of looks. So we can actually go in here and apply some effects. You can press the plus sign and it'll automatically apply a drop shadow. And we can do something like a 20% blur, which makes the drop shadow much more blurrier and it expands it. So you'll notice if I change the opacity to 100%, that's going to change the shadow and you'll be able to see it much more clear. But if I change that blur, it looks a little bit more fuzzy. So I'm going to bring it down to something like 40 maybe, and we're going to push it all the way to the left. So negative 10 on the Y axis, maybe negative 20. That's, that's okay, because we want to kind of work with uh, the lighting we have here as well. So zero is fine. And we're going to reduce that opacity so it's not as apparent. So we can also reduce the blur. There we go. So we have something that looks a little bit natural. Looks like light is shining from here and we can even play with the way our lighting comes in from this gradient. So we can kind of like use this to our advantage a bit. We can make that a little bit more lighter. Great. We can do some interesting stuff also. We can add some shapes. So we see the buttons are the typical circle X square and triangle for the PlayStation controller. So we can just grab our circle ellipsis tool. We just press uh, O. So that's the shortcut for that. So we'll just drop that in there and change that to a stroke with just by pressing that plus button. So if I were to remove it, it's just over here. Remove the fill. And we're going to set that to red, just kind of like that. Uh, the same color as the controller. And we're going to bump that up. That's going to be fine. So we can just do something like that. Uh, we'll grab like a triangle. This is our polygon tool. We'll just drag that in there. And same thing. We'll just apply a stroke. It's green. So we'll just pick a green. Update that just a bit. We don't want them to be too harsh. And we'll grab a square. So R for a rectangle. If you hold shift while you drag it, it'll actually make that square instead of just kind of going like this and skewing it to a rectangle. We are going to make that a stroke as well. And that is like a purplish color. So same thing. And we can start to do some interesting things. Uh, and we have an X right here as well. So we can take our line tool, which is just by pressing L, holding that down. We can create a line and do that. And what we're going to do is we are just going to create like a blue for it, a lighter blue. So it's a little bit more contrast with the background. And we're going to click on that and press command C and command V. And we're going to take the second one. And it doesn't need to be perfect. And we'll just group that. And now we have our own little thing here, our own little X. What we could also do is we can take these lines and we can right click and go over to outline stroke and they'll turn them into actual shapes rather than strokes. So we're going to turn these into shapes and we are going to use our union tool up here. So we're going to union selection. And there you go. If you press command E, it'll merge these layers together. So I'm going to press Command E, and there you go. We don't even need this group anymore. Okay, so we have some cool images 
that we can kind of play with in here. And we could just bring this into our composition. If I send this and this to the back, if I hold those together, now I got something really interesting. I can even apply a gradient to it. If I put the gradient like that, like this, and I change this color to the same type of purple, but darker, it's gonna make it look like the actual controller is on top of it. So it looks like it's actually hidden by its shadow, which is really neat. So we can play with that. We can take our little X here, which looks like a plus sign, but now it's an X. And we can overlay that on top and we can do the same thing. We can grab a linear gradient on top and we can just angle that to kind of show that there's some sort of light. And we can just pick that color, we can make it lighter and we can pick that color and just use the same color that we had before. There's some visual consistency. Now that's cool. We're gonna grab our triangle. We'll hold that. We'll, we're gonna click this, click shift, and we're gonna click the background. We'll select everything and send it to the back. And we can do the same thing now with this. We're gonna make it look like the controller's just on top of it, just a bit. So we'll do that. And this will be the same color. And let's take our last little shape and bring that to the front. And we can apply another gradient to that. And there we go, like it was super easy. And now you kind of have an image here that really works within its setting. And it didn't take much time. Now it looks really three dimensional. Now you can go around, you can fiddle with this just a little bit more, but I urge you to kind of play around when I'm doing this. And also, I mean, think about the type of images you have. Don't just throw them into your layout. Don't forget about them, but try to make them a little bit more dynamic. There's other ways you can do that and we'll get into that in the next video.